أصابعهم في آذانهم من الصواعق حذر الموت والله محيط بالكافرين يكاد البرق يخطف أبصارهم كما أضاء لهم مشوا فيه وإذا أظلم عليهم طاهم ولو شاء الله لذهب بسمهم وأبصارهم إن كل شيء قدير صدري وحل العقدة من لساني يبقه قولي الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد أبيوان Once again, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa um, I'm going to sound a little bit out of it because I'm jet lagged. I got here today, this afternoon with my family. So make dua that we're all able to recover from the interesting experience on the plane. Inshallah, quickly enough. But I, I want to not make this session very long. I wanted to give you guys an introduction of some of the things that I'll be talking to you about. Uh, inshallah ta'ala. I, I, I hope to make these sessions, some of them short and some of them long. Uh, which is why I know some people want to pray eight and get home, some pray 20 and get home, some pray two and get home, some stay home, and that's okay. Um, but those of you that want to rough through the month and inshallah wait until the end of the prayers and then join in the session, uh, inshallah, the, the intention of these sessions, uh, I decided to call these series uh, Striking Examples. And I chose this name because this is actually inspired by a phrase that Allah uses in the Quran in different varieties. Allah struck an example. Quite literally, Allah said, He struck an example. Or, That's how Allah strikes examples. Now, that even in English sounds strange. We give an example, we don't strike an example. The teacher doesn't strike an example, he gives an example. So, what's this expression of Darbul Mathal in the Quran? What's its purpose? So, first, let's understand how is Allah talking about examples anyway in the Quran? The idea of striking something is to create um, shocking or new or unexpected sound. So if I, out of nowhere, did that, all of a sudden, what just happened? Even if somebody's out there, all of a sudden, their attention, they stopped in the middle of conversation and said, what's going on over here? Right. So the idea of striking something is to get immediate, spontaneous attention. And you know, in the middle of a class, teachers sometimes, uh, they don't strike an example, but they do strike the table, or in some countries, strike the student, right? And it gets everybody's attention. It gets everybody, the, the, the courtroom, sometimes there's a procession proceeding going on, and the lawyer says something, or the witness says something, or, and all of a sudden, now everybody starts talking in the courtroom. You're not supposed to be talking in the courtroom. Or what does the judge have to do? He has to strike the hammer to shut everybody up, right? Order, order, right? So the idea of striking, is to actually rejuvenate your attention and to get your attention because now the something really fundamental and essential is being said. But the question is, Allah is already speaking in the Quran. The speech is already going on, right? So for example, the first example that inshallah we're going to dive into tomorrow happens, this is what, 20 or 17th ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah. So a couple of pages of Quran you've already heard. The people who are listening to the Quran are already listening from the beginning and all of a sudden now Allah strikes. An example. What's the purpose of that? The purpose of that is to, you know how you say um, the final nail, right? The icing on the cake, if you will, the final touch. This is actually one of Allah's methodologies in the Quran. That he will explain something that is very important and it's made up of multiple parts. So it's easy for you to forget. Like many of you, you're... Because Ramadan is here, so many of you had to do groceries, special groceries for Ramadan, because we want to make sure we gain weight in Ramadan. So, um, sent with an instruction of get this, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this, and immediately you're like, can you just text it to me? Because that's not going to happen. I'm not a half of. I'm barely, you know, barely no surah al ikhlas and you want me to know all of this, right? So, the idea is we can easily forget when there's a long thing, and especially if it's important, it's easy for you to lose sight of what you're supposed to remember. So what Allah does, really interestingly, is He ties multiple lessons that were just taught together in one example. So He'll take multiple, multiple lessons, use them together, and present them as 
an example. And the, the idea of an example is it's supposed to be so simple, it's something you're already familiar with. The example is not something, some new lesson. The example is actually something that's only effective if you're already familiar with it. And Allah is using something that's already familiar to you to remind you of the new lessons. I'll give you a silly example of an example from my own life. Uh, when I first started uh, becoming serious about praying five times a day, I realized I really don't know my north, east, west, and south randomly. And this is before the days of open the app and tell me where, which way the Qibla is. By the way, those of you who have tried those apps at the Haram know that it usually points towards, I don't know, uh, America, when you're, <laughs> when you're standing right in front of the Haram. But back in the day, you, the idea was you're supposed to look at the sun, you're supposed to tell which way, and you know, me being in New York at the time, uh, the Qibla was east, northeast. Right? So how am I supposed to? I don't even know where east is. I barely know. I was in the city, in New York City, which is you know surrounded by buildings, tall buildings. And you don't really get to see the sunset and the sunrise. or And most of the time, especially in the fall, it's, it's cloudy. How are you going to base it on shadows and things like that, right? So I, I just know it's east, northeast, but I have no idea which way east, northeast is or what's going on. So one of my friends helped me out. Because you know you don't know when it's getting late for Asr or Maghrib or whatever, and you gotta just pray wherever you are. So uh, he helped me out with this, and he said, "Okay, well, where do you live?" I said, "I live in Queens." And Queens, for those of you who don't know the map of New York, Manhattan, the city called New York City, is west, is a bit west, and then further west is New Jersey, and east is Queens. So he goes, "Wherever you are in New York," because I knew New York. I can walk the entire city without a GPS, even now. I was like, "Wherever you are in the city, can you stand towards Queens?" I was like, yeah, I know which way Queens is. I could, that's east. Okay, khalas, done. And now you're, now you're facing east. Now, what's on your right? Well, on my right, if I'm standing towards Queens, is downtown. And on my left is uptown. Well, down is down south, and up is up north. Okay, so just remember, imagine you're facing Queens, and this is down south, and this is up north. And what's, what's behind you? Oh, Jer Jersey. Okay, that's west. Okay, so now I know which way east, northeast is. I can figure this out now. Right, and this crazy enough for a long time after that. This was maybe when I was 18. Uh, for a long time after that, even if I was traveling somewhere in like Texas, Louisiana, so anywhere else, and it's like three in the afternoon, I'm like, oh, I gotta pray east, northeast. Right now, at least they don't have buildings, so you can see your shadow. Right, so I, oh, I know the sun's east over there. Now, I imagine I'm looking at Queens and I figure it out <laughs> because of that the example my head, I was able to use it over and over and over again. I know some people are like, this is really stupid. I could, I could figure that out. I wasn't that good at direction. Right? So the idea behind that is, what does an example do? It takes something that you think is complicated, it uses something you're familiar with, and then builds on it, and that, that way you'll never forget. That way every time you're starting to forget, you can imagine the same example again, and you're sorted out. You're, you're settled. Okay? So what is then, now let's come a little closer to what Allah is doing with His examples. Allah, every time you study an example, especially where Allah says, Allahu mathalan, or uses the word mathal. Mathal literally, quite literally means example or equivalent. Um, the interesting thing is, that's not the only time Allah is giving examples. There's lots of examples in the Quran where Allah just gets right into the example without even telling you He's giving an example. But He'll do that a lot of times. And the, the more you study the Arabic language or the history of the Arabs or their phrases, you will know. Like some of you, for example, and you'll say, that sounds too complicated, but English speakers here, not here in Manchester, but people in London watch a lot of TV and watch a lot of shows and, you know, entertainment and stuff. But if somebody makes a reference to a movie in the middle of a conversation, right, just makes a reference from a dialogue in a movie, if everybody's seen the movie or everybody knows that show or everybody knows that tagline, right, then they're automatically, you don't have to say, hey, by, by the way, I'm going to reference this movie and this famous line just watch out, you know, hasta la vista, baby. And then I'm going to, like, those of you that are old enough are like, yeah, I know, <laughs> you know, you have to tell me twice. So so the idea is you can just seamlessly bring it in because it's part of the culture, right? It's part of the culture, so you can just bring it up and everybody knows, hey, he was referring, making a reference to that movie or that song or that poem or that, you know, that sporting event or that event in history, et cetera. The Arabs used to do that all the time, and the Quran did that too. The Quran very naturally used expressions and phrases that the Arabs were associating before Islam with certain things in their culture, right? 
So that's why studying the Arab culture from before Islam is important for our scholars because they want to see when is Allah using some of that when He's talking. But for other people, because Allah knows the Quran will spread around the world and it will spread very fast, some examples He made sure that they're not subtle, that they're spelled out in good detail, that they're they're elaborately spelled out. So what's the common thread between all of the examples? All of them, and this is the thing I want you to remember, all of them are painting a scene. It's like a, it's like a painting. It's like you, you could even think of it as a movie clip in our, in our culture. Like in ancient times, you might have said, oh, it's a picture, but it's actually a moving image. So you're going to see, for example, tomorrow, you're going to see the image of somebody in the middle of a desert. It's dark, it's cold, you know, it's scary, and they're trying to rub a couple of rocks together, or they rub a couple of sticks together, and they're trying to start a fire in the middle of the desert. Right, and they're desperate because it's getting more and more dangerous, and hypothermia can set in, or you know, pe- predators from around snakes or whatever else. They don't know what dangers lie around them, so they're really you know trying hard to get this fire started, and eventually they're able to start this fire, and then the scene begins. So it's a small scene that now it's easy to remember that scene, but like I said, this is ayah number what seventeen. Uh, Before that, Allah is talking about a lot of things. That built up, and then he brings up this scene. So now it's up to you to understand in this scene which part of this scene is reminding you of which of the ayat that came before it. So you can make an easy mental connection with all of those lessons. And now that 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 image forever becomes a lesson of the Quran. That image itself becomes a lesson of the Quran. Another, you know, inshallah, we'll go through many examples through the Quran uh, this month. Uh, one that comes to mind immediately is Allah describing, for example, uh, false gods, right? People used to worship idols and they used to believe there are spirits behind those idols or they represent the children of God or all kinds of other crazy ideas, right? And they used to uh, sacrifice animals in front of those idols, they used to pour the blood in front of the the idols, they used to bring milk and put it, they used to put flowers on the idols and things like that, right? So to show reverence, to, to show respect for those idols and light candles and all this kind of stuff, right? The problem is when you have flowers and you have blood and you have food and you have milk and you have the stuff, what, what does it attract? It attracts flies, right? It, it attracts flies. And now the thing is, if I went there as a tourist to the temple, and I saw that somebody came with a lot of respect and put a glass of chocolate milk there. And I said, oh, I like chocolate milk. And I decided to, I'm going to get beat up. I might even get killed. You, know, you can't touch that. That's sacred. That's for, the, that's for the wooden whatever. That's for the marble whatever, right? Statue. But the fly comes. It flies over. And what does it do? So that looks good. I'm going to have some. And then it flies away. And the poor guy who's worshipping, he has to, hey, hey, come on, that's for my God. That's not for you. Come on, leave it alone. Please, stop. Stop destroying my religion. My God is not powerful enough to stop you from eating his food. What, what, is, what is the fly doing? The fly is actually destroying their religion. Every fly. And so what does Allah do? Allah talks about false gods. And then he gives the example of a fly that takes food away. Right, just to make this point, like okay, so you could talk about the religion, the history of that religion, the theology behind it, their philosophy, their arguments, and all, or you could just remember the fly and problem solved, you know. So, this, this is what Allah does in the Quran, He uses examples, they're very stunning, they're very striking examples, they're very powerful images. Those images become like you know, things that stay in your head. You want to just keep them in your head. And then the associations with them become multiple lessons in the Qur'an. Some of those examples in the Qur'an are brief. Some of them are more detailed. But they're always very, very strategic. Like Surah Al-Baqarah is the longest surah in the Qur'an. And you heard the entire first juz today. uh, Completion of the first juz, which is not even a half of Surah Al-Baqarah, which you heard today, right? But up until now, we've only heard two examples. Two. That's it. The, the rest of it, they weren't examples. It was just the text keep go, keeps, go, keeps going. And when we get to the next juz, which is going to start tomorrow, inshallah, we're going to keep going. And all the way till the end of Baqarah, you're going to get a handful of examples towards the end. Which tells you, Allah is not using them all the time. Allah is using them very, very selectively. 
Allah is using examples very, very strategically. This is one of the styles or one of the teaching methods of the Qur'an. And so the last thing I'll share with you for today is the purpose. I've shared some purposes with you, but one last purpose of examples. And that is that every, every one of you has been to some kind of learning. You've been in some kind of classroom. In fact, some of you are at university now. Uh, or high school now, or whatever you, you call it here, and you are you have teachers in whatever subject, mathematics, science, history, whatever. You know the difference between a, just any teacher and, a, and an amazing teacher? An amazing teacher is able to give you really, really good examples. And it, it, amazing, you, you're, he's teaching something, and students are like, I don't get it. I don't understand. And the teacher says, hold on. Let's look at this example. Let's break down this example. And you say, I still don't get it. Okay, let me give you another example. And now it starts making sense, right? And then the teacher even says, hey, when the test comes and you get this question, remember this example, remember this example, go through it in your head, and now you'll know how to solve this problem, or you'll know how to solve that problem, you understand? So a great teacher is able to give great examples. Now the example doesn't benefit the teacher. The teacher already knows the material. The teacher doesn't have to use an example. The teacher could just say the concept, and you have some teachers who do that. They just read from the book or just say the concept. They don't give you any examples, no explanation, nothing. They say the test is on Friday. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. Right? The rest is up to you. <clears throat> but the teachers that give you one example, then another example, then another example, that you know, exercise, drill, drill, example, 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 example. What are they doing? These are the teachers that care about the student. They care about the student. And they know that this, for this student, these examples might save their entire academic life. They're absolutely fundamental for them. Allah Azza wa Jal is alim. Alim al ghaybi wa shahada. He knows everything. He knows everything. Interestingly, Allah says, وَيَضْرِبُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ وَيَضْرِبُ اللَّهُ الْأَمْثَالَ لِلنَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ So beautiful. He says, Allah gives examples for the benefit of people. While Allah Himself knows everything. Someone who already knows doesn't need examples. Someone who needs to know, someone who needs to understand, they need examples. So Allah is not giving us just, what the, the point of that last comment was, Allah is not just giving us information in the Qur'an. Allah is not just delivering wisdom to us in the Qur'an or guidance to us in, in the Qur'an. Allah is teaching in the Qur'an. And teaching and telling someone are two different things. A teacher Gen a good teacher genuinely cares about the success of their student. A good teacher chooses the example that they know is going to, going to work for the student, is going to benefit the student. The student's going to remember this and is going to be able to pass the hard test. The teacher takes a lot of care and consideration on planning the curriculum, especially the examples. Especially the examples. So when Allah gave us his final book, which he even describes, you know, Allam al Quran, he taught the Quran. Throughout the history of the world, anybody who teaches anything uses certain tools. One of the most important tools they use is in fact examples. Right? And so that's one of the tools that Allah has used in the arsenal of the Quran that is so fundamental and so, so important because it, it has multiple benefits for the students. One, it makes the concept easy to understand. Two, it makes the concept easy to remember. If you don't remember it, just remember the picture. If you don't remember all the items, just remember the scene. Each part of the scene will remind you each of the items that you forgot. So it's excellent for it's excellent for, for your retention, for understanding to begin with. It's also excellent because next time you're walking around and you see somebody trying to trying to light a fire, or somebody lights a match, or somebody lights you know you know a lighter, or your your mom turns the stove on or something. A fire got lit, all of a sudden your mind got triggered. Oh my God. Yeah. And you start thinking about that. It just becomes natural review for you because those images tend to repeat themselves. Right? Those images come up. And next time you see a fly sitting on your food, you're like, oh, I remember what Allah said about that. You know what? You know what the most amazing things about that is? You're not even in a halaqa, you're not in a masjid, you're not sitting and reciting Quran. You're sitting eating your food, and a fly gave you a a halaqa from Allah, an ayat of Allah and Allah. That's what happened because of example. So it's a profound benefit that Allah has done, given us that has made dhikr of Allah easier and easier for us. 
So with that, inshallah, we'll conclude our first session. Barakallahu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa rahmatullahi ta'ala.